Welcome back. Let's conclude our discussion in Unit 13 on common diseases in sheep and goats with some of the uh, major ones that will finish up this section. The first one let's talk about is scrapie. Again, very, very common in sheep and goats and something that we have to really, really uh, be cognizant of, especially when you talk about sheep uh, and certain sheep species. So this one has a rather slow incubation time, about 18 to 24 months, kind of similar as we talked about mad cow disease or yonis back in cattle. Um, this one will take a long time to incubate, so it takes a little while to show itself that, uh, that you're actually infected with it. But progressive weight loss occurs, especially in the hind quarters. You'll see some distinct weakening uh, of those of that muscle structure. Um, the animals will exhibit lots of nervousness. Uh, they'll itch and itch to the point where this, you know, they, they've rubbed off entire patches of hair or wool uh, all the way down to the bare skin and make it raw. Uh, obviously, lots of restlessness. But oddly enough, they'll have a really normal appetite and very normal body temperature. Um, this is really highly transmissible. Um, so it also withstands uh, very high temperatures, uh, boiling, chemicals, and time. It takes a it, takes a lot to get rid of this once you have it. There's some question of its heritability. So as you see here in the middle, uh, there are some breeds that are genetically testing for it and, and culling identified animals that are uh, come up positive or show the show the, uh, the carrier of the gene for, uh, for scrapie. And the last most important thing you see bolded here right in the middle of the screen is there is no treatment for this one. So basically culling infected animals is your way to go. Next is, real quickly, let's talk about black leg. We've hit on this one before. Again, anywhere, it can occur anywhere to both sheep and goats, anywhere where you see animals on pasture. It's very, very highly contagious. Uh, again, caused by that Clostridium bacteria, the spores that they will ingest, oftentimes off of pasture, uh, colonized then in the digestive tract and the muscle tissue. And once they proliferate, then they'll cause very, very high levels of uh, infection and sepsis and oftentimes a very sudden death. And you can see a number of different things that are going on here. But the carcass will actually decom decompose very, very quickly, kind of at an odd rate. Uh, so the only way to really treat this one is very high doses of penicillin. And if you can, burn that carcass. Uh, if you have a dead animal, burn that carcass as best you can where, right where it is and try and kill those spores. Hypocalcemia, milk fever, parturient paresis, whichever one that you want to uh, discuss here with regard to um, goats and sheep. Uh, but again, this is uh, a deficiency of blood calcium and oftentimes occurs uh, within 24 hours of kidding or, uh, uh, or the, the ewes giving birth. Um, you'll see paralysis, comatose uh, settings are set in and death. And again, very often related to nutritional status. Now, this one is not super common uh, in sheep and goats, but it can happen. Uh, so you want to be aware of how to identify it and how to treat it. And because we spend a lot of time with sheep and goats on pasture, we also have to have the conversation again about grass tetany or hypomagnesia. And this is where you'll have uh, low magnesium levels associated with low soil magnesium content that's in the grass, especially in early season, early season grazing. So they'll have low blood magnesium levels. Um, sometimes it's also associated with overgrazing, where there's just not much there to eat. Uh, they graze the pasture totally down, and so you have to be aware that that could cause it as well. Symptoms, again, very distinct behavioral changes. They'll uh, stagger. Uh, they'll do what they call stargazing, which is kind of exactly how it sounds. They'll just stand there and stare at the sky. <laughs> Excuse me. Sometimes convulsions and spasms, and then sudden death, uh, particularly. About uh, you need to hit treatment between uh, six to ten hours of onset if you're going to be successful with uh, intravenous or sub-Q Epsom salts. Uh, early, you know, if you get it er catch it early, you can go oral, and then get them off the pasture, get them into the barn, and uh, control their feeding a little bit better. So. Prevention is just primarily supplemental magnesium. Have the proper amounts of mineral feeding, uh, especially 30 days prior to grazing. That will help them distinctly. White muscle disease, again, we've talked about the uh, prior. And again, just due to the amount of time that sheep and goats can spend on pasture, they're susceptible to 
to this one here, especially whenever we have low selenium soils. The treatments and prevention are all basically the same as we talked about in other species. Here's a unique one to sheep and goats, and that's enterotoxemia or overeating disease. And it is basically just as it sounds. And if you say, well, uh, a, a you or a, or a nanny goat could uh, literally eat themselves to death, and the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, you can trigger a proliferation of the pathogen in the GI. And this, this one is another Clostridium-related uh, pathogen that, you know, if you have uh, sheep and goats that just go to town eating on really lush and fresh pasture, uh, oftentimes it'll, or sometimes it will just trigger that uh, Clostridium pathogen again to proliferate, you know, way past what its control rate is, and cause the onset of sepsis uh, in enterotoxemia. Symptoms is they'll just acutely, just almost um, immediately go off the feet, have profuse diarrhea, set into convulsions, have uh, staggering or circling gaits, uh, and then kind of sudden death. And you may not even see any of that. You just walk out in the pasture and find one dead. So treatment of this one, the uh, antitoxin vaccination can help you with, with enterotoxemia or overeating disease. Real quickly, as we're getting to the end of this uh, second segment, uh, again, talk about pink eye, which we've hit about in all other species. But again, this one, uh, problematic, you know, again, because of the amount of time that uh, sheep and goats will spend in the outdoors. And uh, under lack of fly control, can get this one spreading pretty quickly uh, throughout your herd. It can be bacterial or viral transmitted by those flies, typically. Uh, eroding the eye covering, causing blindness, uh, swelling, uh, sensitivity, bright light, erosion of the cornea. So uh, this one is hard to prevent, especially when you talk about the pasture. But anything that you can do to help prevent the flies, whether it's feeding a uh, feeding a product like Clarifly or Raybon in order to uh, help cut down on the larvae that would be um, deposited in manure, uh, or and or using premise sprays for fly control uh, or simply going out and using a uh, fly dust or a fly spray in a regular basis trying to uh, keep flies off of your sheep and goats. So antibiotic therapy goes right in the eye, injection up into the eye socket, or you can go with a topical treatment. Getting right to the end here, foot rot is of course one that we have to be aware of. Again, whenever we have poor pasture conditions, uh, poor feeding strategies, we can have problems with foot rot in sheep and goats. It's rather uncommon because uh, sheep and goat hooves are fairly hard normally, uh, you know, as, as long as you have a proper feeding program and um, you know, proper pasture or lot conditions. This should not often be a problem. But as we covered it with uh, cattle, the symptoms, the causes, the signs, and the treatments are all very similar. Um, so you would want to uh, be aware of them, but it's not one that's it's commonly affected in sheep and goats. Certainly we could talk about abscesses whenever uh, animals are injured or something of that nature that could set in. Uh, sometimes difficult to detect if you have a sheep with uh, long, long wool on them. Uh, but absolutely parasites you have to be aware of. Uh, even though we're ruminants, uh, sheep and goats both have kind of that split upper lip that they can get closer to the ground. And so they're very, very susceptible to gastrointestinal parasites. So you want to be active in your deworming strategy in order to prevent those. So I believe that brings us to our summary slide and our take home messages here is first make sure that you're able to recognize um, major sheep and goat diseases and their effects. You know, be able to identify those symptoms and signs in order to proactively treat and prevent the diseases that may be problematic for your operation. Uh, be able to identify and recommend treatment and prevention strategies. And then understand what the potential losses to profitability are due to disease. So that's going to conclude our two lecture series on sheep and goat, common diseases in sheep and goats. Thanks for tuning in.